Hello everybody, my name is Robbie Swale, if you don't know me, and I am a leadership coach and author, uh, and, which is the reason I say it like that, is that that still feels like a slightly strange thing to say. And I'm the host of the Coach's Journey podcast, which might be why you find yourself here on this YouTube channel watching this video. Um, so, as I kind of hint there, over the last year, one of my big focuses on uh, focuses in my work has been on publishing the 12-minute method series of books. Three of them are out as I record this video, how to start when you're stuck, how to keep going when you want to give up, and how to create the conditions for great work. And the fourth one will come out uh, within a week of me recording this video. It's, it's really nearly out, so that's very exciting. And that's called How to Share What You've Made. And as I described on an episode of the Coach's Journey podcast earlier this year, so you can go and check that out if you want. Um, uh, and if you've watched that, though, there'll, there'll probably be new things, new textures in this video too. But as I described in that, it's interesting to have one brand, The Coach's Journey, and then to really develop and grow another brand, The 12-Minute Method. And when I'm talking about brands here, really what I mean is areas of my work coalescing into a thing that you can kind of hold. That's, in some ways, that's what a brand is, right? It's, it's abstract some things coalescing into a thing you can see, you can, you can like look at, you can hold it. Um, and then it's got interesting. It's like, well, where do these things intersect? And over the course of it, that, that's partly what this video is about, right? It's like, how do we take something that I found incredibly useful for beating procrastination, for being more productive, for finally doing the things that I really want to do, the 12 minute method, and apply it to coaching, which for many coaches is like building a coaching business, for example, is the thing they really want to do. Using the skills they've got is the thing they really want to do and sometimes aren't doing it. Um, and then the other reason I'm making this video, and this is, uh, I'm saying this just briefly, because I think it's in instructive for, can be instructive for a coaching business. I talk more about that in the Coaches Journey podcast episode. Let me just check which episode it was. I think it was like 35 earlier this year, maybe. Um, yeah, episode 35 is the one where I talk about some of these things. It can be good to set yourself outrageous challenges in your coaching business. I talk a bit that, about that in that episode, I'm pretty sure. Um, and, and I set myself a challenge to appear on 100 podcasts or to tell the story of the 12-minute method on 100 podcasts. And and I realized that the the uh, the, 12, the, the Coaches Journey YouTube channel was not one that I'd done. So I was like, well, let's do something. Let's make something. And this is what those challenges are useful for, for me. They're useful for me getting creative getting me out of my own way, and in this case, creating loads of content about this thing that I really I really think is interesting, the 12-minute method. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell the story of the 12-minute method pretty briefly, but over a few minutes. Um, I'm gonna think about that for coaches. I'm gonna share an idea that I had. So one of the things about appearing on lots of podcasts or giving lots of talks about the 12-minute method is it's made me clarify lots of thoughts, and some of that is for coaches, and I talked about that in that episode 35 a little bit, and it's clarified further since then, I think. So I'm gonna share some of those ideas. Um, I'm going to talk about the, if I was going to have a 12 minute practice for coaches as a coach um, to grow my coaching business, I'll, I'll talk about what it was, what it would be. Uh, and then we'll, yeah, and then we'll see where we get to. And I'm recording this in one take because that's the story of the 12 minute method. It's not maybe 12 minutes. I'm pretty sure it's going to be longer than that, um, but I'll keep my eye on that. So um, let me explain what the 12 minute method is for any newcomers. If you're not a newcomer, you can do two things. Uh, you can do, you can skip it um, or you can do what I call in my, in the Coach's Journey community, you can apply the frame of learning, which is if you've heard something before or you're finding something boring, you have a choice. You can switch off or skip, or you can ask, what could I learn from this? So what could the new thing be? And that will help you find learning wherever you, you are. And I learned that from an amazing woman called Isabel Mortimer, who deserves credit for being the first person that I heard say that. It, ch it changed how I think about learning ever since. So the 12-minute method story goes back to 2016. And I was, I was a year into my coaching business. I was working with a coach, Joel Monk, you can listen or watch a video interview with him on this channel or um, or, or at thecoachesjourney.com uh, or, or on the Coaches Journey podcast. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Um, and Joel and I were working, really this th theme emerged, which is how do I, Robbie the client, share myself with the world? And that emerged for a bunch of reasons, um, one of which was it was really stressful. I, I was quite anxious every time I had to... Uh, when I was putting my first posts about coaching on Facebook, when I was launching my website, it was all like an anxiety ridden thing. And that wasn't pleasant, but also I kind of knew that in the future it would be really useful, not necessary. We'll get to what's necessary as a coach later, but useful to be able to be public about myself in a different way that didn't feel so angst ridden. 
Um, and, I, and, and there was, and I think there was also just something calling me. So most, many people will have had that feeling. It's just like, I know this is important. So after a bit of work on this in different ways, I wrote a poem and um, Joel helped me create an article and share that online using a particular storytelling um, framework. Uh, what else? I can't remember. We played with some other things, I think. And then maybe those, maybe the poem and the article with that. And then we, we, we did something interesting. Uh, we created a practice, a series of articles, an experiment. And it was based, Joel said, you know, when I was an artist, I used to be a painter, I used to like painting series of paintings. So what if we might write a series of articles? And what if we use, we'd, I'd, I'd exp express that my, 12, my, my short train journey, about 12 minutes, from where I lived in, in Clapham Junction to London Waterloo in London, uh, was uh, a place where I felt quite a lot of freedom. So I, what if we use that? And the practice became this, uh, write while the train's moving, stop when it stops, proofread that article once, and then post it online. And uh, I thought we'd post it on LinkedIn because nobody really read LinkedIn, uh, is what I thought. Also, LinkedIn had a kind of safer feel for me. I felt more anonymous, but also like my close friends weren't there in the way they were on Facebook. But also, I think it still has a different feel to, to, to most of the other social media platforms. Um, and we're going to do it five times in the next two weeks because I was going into the office that I worked in part time uh, at that point five times over those two weeks. So I have two journeys each day, do, do an article on one of them. Um, and I did it. And one of the ways I've, I've learned to talk about it this year, as I've talked about this story more and more, is it wasn't, didn't feel nice. Like it still had the angst. It was still the kind of hand shaking over the post button feeling. But it kind of felt good. And these days what I think that is, that's the kind of feeling of courage. Right? Courage is just acting in the face of fear. So you can't have courage unless you're afraid of something. I was definitely afraid. And when you act in the face of fear, oh, something changes. In some ways, like, you start to become someone new. Uh, and so I had that feeling. And I didn't get much response. Like, some of the articles didn't get any likes or comments, I think. But some of them got the odd one. Um, and at the end of the two weeks, I went away on holiday. I kind of knew something was up by then. Like, I, I said that I would think about it over the holiday. But even by that point, I'm pretty sure I, I knew I was going to carry it on. And it was going to become a weekly practice. And maybe I just had to kid myself that it was a, a, an experiment to, to get myself doing it. But I really, what I really wanted was a weekly practice. I don't know. So it became a weekly practice until Christmas. And then it carried on. And now I've been doing it for six and a bit years. So more than six years of every week sitting down once, writing an article in that way. Except, as I hinted before, and this is where the 12-minute method comes from, at some point the... Um, I stopped getting the train as much. So I checked how long it was and it was about 12 minutes. And so I started setting a timer for 12 minutes, often on my phone. These days on this little uh, kind of kitchen timer I bought on Amazon. Um, I had an idea earlier in the year that I need to get some 12 minute method timers branded up. Uh, so if you know how to do that, um, let me know. Um, and set the timer for 12 minutes, proofread once, right when the time is going, Stop when it stops, post it on LinkedIn. They're on my website now as well. And after six years, there are something like 280 of them, I think now, something like that. Um, I haven't checked recently, so I'm guessing a bit. I might be up or down by, probably up by 10. I don't think I'm down on it probably. Um, yeah, and, and then, and then so, so that's amazing, right? That's, that's one part of the 12 minute method. Just use that 12 minutes for something every week. And then what might happen is you might sit down three years, say, into your practice of doing something every week for 12 minutes, and you might notice something strange. What happened to me was um, Seth Godin, the, the blogger who I'd, I'd heard him talk a lot about the power of a writing practice. And so I kind of had that in mind as I was doing this to some extent. And I've seen everything he said about, he says about writing practices to be true. Uh, they change how you write, of course, because you practice writing, but they also change how you think and they change how you speak. Uh, for me, it's changed, absolutely changed, the thing that I set out to change, which is, can I be comfortable sharing things I've made, even when they're imperfect with the world, especially online? And yes, I can. I'm gonna make this video in one take, uh, and we're gonna put it on the Good Journey YouTube channel, and people are gonna watch it. Put, you know, some, who knows how many. Some of my videos now, after being up for quite a long time, I've got thousands of views on my Robbie Swale YouTube channel, The Coach's Journey, is catching up. Um, so it changes you. Uh, but something interesting happened. So, so Godin published a book of his blog 
like a, a compilation of a load of the articles he'd written over, I can't remember, a three or five year period. And I thought about three years in, I can do that. Because it's quite unwieldy trying to read someone's blog on LinkedIn. If someone wanted to go and read back all the posts, it's quite hard. It's easier if you go to robbyswale.com and find the blog there. They're all on there now as well. Um, and, uh, and then I realized that I had about 130 articles from those three years and 80,000 words written 12 minutes at a time. So a big part of the 12-minute method is if you do something a small amount every week for a long time, you end up with something magical something big. Now that's in some ways obvious, but I didn't know it somehow. And maybe I knew it, but I didn't like know it in my heart, in my gut, didn't know it in my body, that, that that was a really true thing until I'd done it. And then what was interesting to just kind of tie it up to the books is I thought, I thought it'd be funny. I thought I could write a book at that point and call it, I wrote this book in 12 minutes. Um, that would be the, the name of the book. And I sat down with my friend, Steve, um, who's a, who's a copy editor and, and, and said, here's the plan. Are you up for helping me with it? Um, and he said, yeah, but the, one of the interesting questions is, can the book do what the title does? So the title says to Steve, if Robbie wrote a book in 12 minutes, I better get on and do that thing that I say I want to do. But can the book actually help with that? And it turned out it could. And this is a crazy thing looking back. I basically slowed down with my coach at the time, Katie Harvey, and thought about what are the stages of the creative process? Like if you wanted to help someone do a thing they've been meaning to do for a long time, what are the stages they have to go through? And I mapped those four stages out and then I printed off all 130 odd blogs and I dealt them out and they almost all went. There's a few that didn't. Um, those you can get, uh, if you buy the books, you get access to a, uh, an ebook of those pieces that didn't, didn't quite make it um, into the final series. Uh, hmm. But almost all of them went. And that's amazing to me. So they almost all went into those four stages and, and, Here's why that, here's why I think that happens. So one is when you're writing in 12 minutes at a time, you don't really have time to think, just trusting your intuition, trusting what you're interested in the week. Um, and what I was interested in was my own struggles. So like how I'm, I'm starting my business, having a writing practice, putting a website up, all these kind of things. And my coaching, my business was coaching. So in the coaching, I was helping people do the things they really wanted to do. So it turned out all these things I was writing about, almost all of them were about this thing, creativity at, at its, at its, in its most uh, uh, clearest or most basic way, uh, making a thing that doesn't exist, exist. Um, whether that's a business, a book, a creative project, all those things. So that's where the books come in. So it was gonna be one long book. It's ended up as four, I got a rebrand from I wrote this book in 12 minutes to the 12 minute method. The four stages start, everything that's ever mattered was started at some point. Nothing will exist unless you start it, keep going. You know, if you start something and you keep going for long enough, uh, you don't give up, then um, something magical might happen. You have to share your work. So at some point, all the work that counts, something really created, got shared. Seth Godin says, it's not art unless you ship it. Um, and that's a bit too American for me. So it's share it, right? And that'll be the fourth book. And then the other important thing you can do if you want to do great work and you want things to keep going is you can create the conditions for that. You can't control great work. It's too complex for that, but you can create the conditions for great work to happen. So that's where the books came from. And you can buy them on Amazon and from my website. And if you're in the UK, Blackwell's or Waterstones, US, Barnes and Noble, lots of other booksellers. They're in lots of places. Um, and please do. And if you do, please leave a review. Or if you've if you've read them, please leave a review because if you like them. Well, if you didn't, you can leave a review too, but I don't care about that. And um, what I want is to find the people who for whom this will make a massive difference. And that's partly what telling the story is about as well, right? Because it might be that even just what I've said will spark you into action on something that you want to do that matters. Maybe, for example, on your coaching business. So at some point, I slowed down and started to think, well, okay, you know, and, and over the course of this year, for example, as part of my podcast challenge, I started a new podcast, The 12 Minute Method, where I examined, you'll find that on all the podcast places, I examined all the, all the things that I have, wanted to do, perhaps sometimes for a very long time, not done, and then finally done. And what do they have in common? And that includes my coaching business. So I thought quite a lot about, well, how do we link these two things together? This incredible thing that I now have seen that I hadn't seen before of the power of small, regular practice and coaching. And one of the most influential things on my coaching business was the book, The Prosperous Coach by Rich Litvin and Steve Chandler. Bye. It's a fantastic book. And over the course of this year, 
maybe it was starting to land earlier than that, but I, I kind of talked about it more this year, is, is I think one of the key things about that book, there are many important principles in there for coaches, certainly with the word when it came out in 2013, I read it in 2015, 2016. Some of that's been absorbed more into the mainstream of coaching now, but it's really important then. And there's still loads in that book. It's very expensive now, but it'll be a good investment in your coaching business. Um, so there's lots in there that is important. One of the things I think they identified, it's it's in, in the main bit and it's also an appendix, is really they narrowed it down to one of the things, they call it the Pro Prosperous Coach Framework or something like that, I think. And what I think they've identified is the things that you absolutely have to do if you want to grow a coaching business. Now, there are lots of things that you can do to grow a coaching business, but I don't think anyone can grow a coaching business without doing these four things. And they actually link together. There's an idea that I learned that I think Jim Collins, who wrote the book Good to Great, um, I think he coined it, the flywheel, which is basically if you can arrange, if you can work out what are the things that lead to each other and keep feeding each other so that your business grows and grows and grows, then that's a very powerful thing to know. You can focus on like tweaking it in different places. And I think that's what the Prosperous Coach four things are. They're not only the things that really... If you don't do them, you can't have a coaching business, but also if you do enough of them, they're also the flywheel things. If you do enough of them, you almost can't help but have a successful coaching business. So I'm gonna run through that quickly and because I'm very high tech, uh, I don't really know how to edit videos. So I've got this, which is a slide, which is a print off of a slide I did. Um, let me see, can I get me in the frame and the thing at once? Not really, here we go. Uh, so here's the, here we go. These are the, these are the pieces of the Prosperous Coach framework. So connect, invite, create and propose. Those are the four things they identify. Now to make it into a flywheel, you can only coach clients in there, which is the uh, what, what Litvin uh, would call the lag indicator. So these are the things you do. And after you've done these, you get this. Um, it's hard to start from this, but if you start from here, there is an extra thing on here. Like if you want to oil the flywheel in lots of ways, creating a body of work, like the 12 minute method did for me, like 280 blogs. That's a good thing for a lot of these pieces but let me quickly do this so connect so if you don't ever connect with new people really hard to have a coaching business I, I don't know how you could do it you can connect in lots of ways but to, to, to have a coaching business you really need to connect with people um, if you never invite people into a conversation with you I don't see how you can have a coaching business even if that invite is I would like to work with you okay shall we speak right most coaches know that that's part of it now the powerful thing that the prosperous coach recommend is if the next thing you do is create a powerful coaching experience, then that's interesting for a few reasons, right? One is, uh, it's a great way to sell coaching because then people really understand what it's like to work with you. For me, the other is, uh, so one of the ways you get to connect is referrals. And if you've created a powerful coaching experience with someone, you get this extra thing across here. Whereas if you just have a kind of chemistry call, it's harder for people to refer things to you. If you've changed them by creating a powerful coaching experience, then, that is, um, that's something else. Also, really hard to have a coaching business. If you never say to someone, proposal is it costs X pounds to work with me for Y months or Y sessions. Um, there's a video on my, the Robbie Swell YouTube channel and the Coaches Journey website about um, why I work over a period of uh, time, not a number of sessions. If you don't uh, ever say it costs X pounds or dollars to work with me, very hard to have a coaching business. Impossible, right? Yeah, you have to say it at some point, otherwise people can't pay you. You can't, you don't really have a business if you don't have any money in it. And then coach some clients. And the great thing about this is this is also a flywheel. So that's that's why you kind of uh, have to do these things. And I don't think there's anything else that you have to do other than these things. But also if you connect with enough people, you almost can't help but end up inviting some people into coaching conversations. If you invite enough people into coaching conversations, you almost can't help but create powerful experiences with people if that's part of your um part of your piece. If you do this, there's two things you almost can't help but do. You almost can't help but get more referrals and you almost can't, which, which helps feed invitations. Which, and sometimes you almost can't help but make proposals because sometimes you're going to say, should we talk about working together? They're going to say, uh, can we work together? And then you're making the proposal. Right? Now you can get better, of course, at all these things, but if you make enough proposals, you almost can't help but coach clients, have money in. Once you coach clients, they connect you to new people and away you go. So, if we were gonna create 12 minute practices for coaches, it would make sense to me that the, you were connect, create, connect, uh, creating a 12 minute practice about connecting, inviting, creating powerful coaching experiences, or making proposals. Now just, I'll say a quick thing about this because I mentioned it earlier. Creating a body of work is interesting. 
it can connect you to people. It can make it more likely that people inquire about coaching or that when you invite people into a coaching conversation, they say yes, because they already know you in some way. It can also help this bit. It can help people say yes here because um, by the time they get to here, they already know you because they've read 10 of your blogs. They've watched this video. They, you, you feel like you know me. When I do that, I, maybe I'll, I'll probably mention the Coaches Journey community at the end. You can come join me, right? And it's more likely you'll come join me if I do that invitation because you've found my body of work. You've connected with me in some way. That's why we're here. Um, and maybe YouTube's helping you connect with me right now. Um, it doesn't always happen in... Um, in order, of course. Someone's washing my window during this, so that's that's quite funny. Um, uh, I hope it doesn't disrupt the video too much. I wonder if I can stay focused. So, um, if you're going to create it, you might want to create one of these four things. Hard to just create that one from scratch. A little hard to create that one from scratch, but not impossible. Um, for example, you could have a peer coaching practice where you co you create power, you practice creating powerful coaching experiences every week. Um, you could do it between 10 of you, find 10 people from your cohort and you roll around them. Uh, you do you do coaching for them and they do coaching. You know, you each coach someone each week. So it changes every time. So you're learning loads. There we go. There you, do. you do it for 30 minutes and you've got that amazing um, 12 minute practice on creating. Um, you could have a connection piece. So I'm going to spend 30 minutes every week connecting with somebody, reconnecting with somebody, uh, connecting two people together any of these things. An invitation piece, I'm going to send out two invitations every Tuesday morning next year. I was just thinking before this video, I might set that as an intention for um, growing my coaching business next year. Proposals, uh, a little hard to do this one, but you can certainly practice it. You could practice every week saying out loud or calling one of your colleagues or friends and saying, this is how I make my proposals right now. There's a practice there. Um, that was a little harder. These are the these ones feel like, and of course, body of work one is, is easy. We've talked about that. So, <clears throat> one of the important things about this, and one of the another reason why I think that these things are a powerful way to think about creating a twelve minute practice. It's really important to remember. Some of those things can feel like I never want to invite people. In. I don't want to be as pushy as to invite people into a coaching session. So, it can be tricky to hold that. So, the thing I would say the, the a real insight for me when I was thinking about this and thinking about why was it such a good thing for me to push myself and make myself get better at connecting, inviting, creating and proposing. And I realized it, it links really closely to the 12 minute method. Because remember the 12 minute method wasn't about how creating a body of work. And it wasn't even about practicing writing. It was about becoming somebody different. It was about becoming somebody who wasn't afraid of sharing their work online. And it worked. Practicing somewhere in year three or four, I realized that actually there are almost none anymore that I um, that I find truly difficult. N no topics that I, I, I couldn't write about, pretty much. And the great thing about this is, I don't think there's, I think these, these, these things, they're almost all things that most coaches would love to be better at. Like most people, like so, i.e., so the reason this is important is it attached, one of the things I noticed when making the 12 Minute Method podcast, analyzing the things that I've done, the ways that I've done them, is detaching from the outcome, knowing the outcome you want, but also detaching from it, is really important. And having an externally focused outcome is a big, a good help if you want to give up on something. Not helpful if you want to keep going with it. So think about it like this. If you had a connection practice and you practice connecting with new people every week, what you would be getting better at is make, forming meaningful connections with people. Now, most people would like to be able to form meaningful connections with people and be more and more skilled at that. So practicing this is not just for your coaching business, it's for you as a human. It's an investment in you for the future, helping you connect with people, inviting. Inviting really is offering somebody a gift, saying, I've got a thing that I can do. I'd like to offer it to you. Would you like it? And look, uh, on the episode 35 of the podcast, I outline a couple of invitations. I'm not going to do it now because we're already at 24 minutes. Um, so, um, huh. This is the problem with videos. No one sees the pause when I'm writing. So an invitation though, it, it can be like that. It, it should be, a, you should create it so that it is a gift in and of itself. You might say to someone, I'm really inspired by you because of this. And I'd love to invite you into a coaching conversation. Either way, being able to talk openly about a thing that you really care about and offer it to somebody with a genuine generosity of spirit is the kind of thing that most people would love to get better at. I'm certainly really glad I've got much better at it. I used it this year to help create a birthday present for my dad for his 60th birthday, 70th birthday, his 70th birthday. Um, 
I wouldn't have been able to do that if I hadn't been practicing it for years by inviting people in my coaching business. Creating powerful coaching, pretty much every coach wants to do that. Practice it. Practice it every week. Find the way to do it. I love that I've just come up with that thing where you around robin coaching. So you get to coach a different kind of person every week and only repeat every 10 weeks. Amazing. You should all do that. Talking about money. Most people will be... Here's a weird thing to say. Most people would, many people would like to be better at talking about money. Pretty much everyone would benefit from practicing talking about money and detaching from the outcome and charging for themselves. So really powerful thing to practice. So that's really it. That's pretty much the video. So we've talked about the 12 minute method and where it came from, the power of practice. We've talked about the prosperous coach flywheel and why this is important for coaches and why they were really onto something in that video. Um, and we've talked about the key idea that you need to remember that practicing any of those things any of them will probably help you grow as a person in a way that you would want to grow. And therefore you win whether your coaching business grows or not. But if you do it enough, it almost can't help but grow. Almost. And of course, if, if it's not working, then you might want to focus in on a different one of these. You might want to get you, in the long term, you want to get better at each of these things so that the flywheel flows more, there's less like drift away from the edges, all that kind of thing. So it's been a pleasure to make the video. Love that it got interrupted by the window cleaner. You need to go and pay him. Um, and, uh, yeah, look, this is the kind of thing I love to talk about in the Coach's Journey community. Here's the invitation. If you've enjoyed this, you might want to come along to that. I can help you design the practices if you want. Um, you know, it's a chance to be coached by me as part of a group. And depending on the membership level you have, some one-to-one -one time as well. Um, it's an amazing group of people and I'm, I'm really fascinated by how it's come to exist and it's, you know it now goes beyond me these all these relationships people working together people talking to each other loads um friends for life made so i love it and um we can do some work there if you want to get into more detail on something like this some other support with your coaching business the idea of it is it's the most flexible and affordable way to work with me so you can join from as little as 10 pounds a month um you get slightly different amounts of group calls and one-to-one -one calls depending on how much you pay up to about 100 pounds a month um and in there, we can do work on any of these things and more. And the idea is it's to help coaches thrive as humans and create thriving businesses. Um, and that's because I believe that coaching has a huge thing to offer the challenges that people face in the world. Just look at me, this whole 12 minute method story emerged in a coaching session. So thanks so much for watching. I'll put some of the links below, but also pretty much everything that I've mentioned is Googleable pretty easily. Um, thanks for being with me. Uh, do check out the coachesjourney.com and the podcast. Um, on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. And um, if you're watching this just before Christmas when I'm releasing it, have a wonderful Christmas uh, and a wonderful 2023.